Okay, this is going to be your lecture two of all your AutoCAD introduction class. Okay, so by the end of this, this lecture, I hope that you can be able to identify different types of O-snaps. You can use O-snaps. We're going to learn how to create some circles, arcs, elliptical arcs, some polylines, and some splines. And we're also going to learn how to create layers. Okay, so all the things that we're going to do is going to be located this way. So we're going to first take a look at the all snaps and auto tracking off of that, then circles, arcs, ellipses, polylines, splines, and lastly, layers. Okay, O snaps are going to be your object snaps, and you're going to use those in, just in case if you want to get to a certain point. So if I want to start a line or something from a midpoint or an end point or a center of something, I'll use the O snaps as opposed to just kind of guessing where those are on the screen. So just in case if you if you're a keyboard type of person all of these ones that are located with the parentheses around you can just type in that while you're inside of a command. So if you're in the line command and you want to go to the end point or something if you don't feel like holding down the shift button and right clicking or, or doing any of that you can just type in END and that will take you to the end point O snap. Okay? So taking a look and bringing up this O-Snap menu where you can select from, remember you can hold down the control or the shift button. So while you're holding that down and then just do a right click and then you can let both of those go and then you can select from this menu what O-Snap that you're looking for. Okay. Running O-Snaps is something that's super useful and these are O-Snaps that's going to always be on unless you turn them off. So what I mean is if you're using, if you always go into the endpoint a lot, you can always check this in your running O-Snap box and it's going to always be on for you. So as you're going through th certain things, you don't always have to shift and right click and find the endpoint or type in END. Your running O-Snap will take care of that for you. Now what controls that if you want to turn those running O-Snaps on or off, remember it's going to be our function key 3 will let us go through them. Also remember that if you're using the tab key, and it's multiple O snaps along that line, you can use that tab button on your keyboard to cycle through which one you want to use. I'm just showing you here some different ways of how to get to it. If you hold down a shift button and right click and you come to those snap settings, it's going to bring up this dialog box. The really quick way of using it is also if you click on this little fly up, which is going to be next to your, is going to be down there on your, uh, on your command line next to your command line on the status bar you can use that and then you can just put a check next to it and that's what I'll even go into this little dialog box and you can turn on running O snaps rather quickly doing it that way okay your O snap tracking works it, it, it tracks off of whatever endpoints you have and we're gonna use some O snap tracking a lot so if, just in case if I want to create something that's two inches away from a, an endpoint I can use my O snap tracking and I can track off of that. So I can click an endpoint and then I can kind of drag off of it and you're going to see some green lines that should appear, some green kind of broken lines. And that's just you nothing but tracking off of it. Another useful one is going to be our polar tracking, which is going to let us use angles. So instead of using the polar input method, we can use polar tracking if it's something that's created at 45 or 30 degrees or whatever degrees that we want to get to and we can use that a lot quicker and that's going to help us out really quick so you can use either one of these methods and remember that they're controlled by our, our function key 11 for our O-snap tracking and our polar tracking is going to be our function key 10 okay so now when we create circles there's going to be a few ways of creating circles but in the beginning I just want to let you know if you're looking to create a circle, you either need to know the diameter or the radius. And these are the two most commonly used ones. Also remember that the diameter is the total distance that goes across that circle, where the radius is only half that distance going across. So that's going to be your difference between the two. So most of the time when you look at a drawing, it's going to either have an R in front of it or it'll have the diameter symbol, and you can use whichever circle that you want respectively. Okay. Also with circles you have lines of tangency. So when I'm creating circles, I can have a tangent point. And remember a, a point of tangency is where that line is only going to touch that circle in one point. 
So for example, if you take a look at this circle that's on the inside of this, that line, this is measured at this 36 degree angle, is only going to touch that circle here. This line is only going to touch it here and here. It's only going to touch it in one place, and that's going to only that's your line of tangency. Okay. Now let's take a look at some arcs. And here's some arcs. So remember with the arcs, there's many different ways of doing arcs. But for example, we long as we know some some certain information that we need to know. Usually either we know the the center point, the start point, the end point, or the radius. In some cases we do know the direction. So like I say, AutoCAD is going to give us many different ways to create arcs. Now I would advise everybody to go and look underneath the lecture demos because all of these were running old snaps, our old snap menus, our auto tracking, our circles, arcs, and these next commands that I'm going to tell you, I have examples showing you how each one of these are done. Okay, so let's take a look at what an ellipse is. Ellipse is going to kind of be a little flattened circle and it's going to either be defined by its diameter, which is from here to here, and then it's going to be defined by a radius or it can be defined by two radiuses. And once again, if we go and take a look at those examples, you'll see that you can define these by these ways. And this is kind of a quick overview of how the command looks on the inside of it. So I can define it by its center and then I have to give it either one point here and then another point at the top. Or I can define it by its whole axis and then another end point. Also, you have an elliptical arc. So if you just want to create an elliptical arc that kind of looks something like this, you can go ahead and do that as well. Polylines. Polylines are just a, a, a group or a collection of you, these lines, but they all create one shape. So what I mean by that is if I draw a line with a polyline and I create it along here, these are all going to be behaving as one line. No matter how the breaks are, or angles, or things of that nature in it, they're going to all behave as one line. Some examples of some other polylines are going to be the rectangle command, and we're going to use the rectangle command a lot. Polylines, I mean or polygons, I'm sorry. And if we use polygons, you know, if we have so many sides of it, AutoCAD is going to create those as a polyline. And also a donut is a special type of polyline, although it's more or less a round circle with some thickness to it. Okay, so when we're creating a rectangle, and remember these are polylines, it's just going to either be defined by two points is the common way I use it. You can use the area. If you have dimensions, you can give it a rotation. So you'll have all those different things that you can use in the rectangle command. Also remember, just because it's called rectangle doesn't mean that you can't create a square with it. So all you have to do is just create the two sides at the same distance. So that's going to be the rectangle command. And once again, go and take a look at that. And that should be located underneath the polylines underneath your lecture demos. Okay. When you're dealing with polylines, there's two really important rules that you need to follow. You're going to have one that's going to be inscribed and the other one is going to be circumscribed. The difference between the two is that do you want your polygon on the inside of a circle or you want it circumscribed, which means your polygon fits on the outside of a circle. So that's the true biggest difference of it. So if you're thinking about it, inscribed, inside, circumscribed, outside is the way I like to think of it. Okay, The donut command. There are some certain rules when you're creating a donut or a dot, for example. So when you're creating these donuts, you've got an outside diameter, which is going to be your OD, and you're going to have an inside diameter, which is your ID. And that's the way you're going to define a donut. So when you create that, you can go ahead and put in your outside diameter and your inside diameter. Now, it kind of works a little funny because sometimes your outside diameter can be smaller than your inside diameter, and it will take that. But if you go ahead and put your outside diameter at zero, it won't take that. So if you can kind of read these little rules that I have created for you, you should have no problems with creating donuts. Okay, a spline. A spline is going to be, if you ever did any kind of board drafting, it's going to be kind of like using your French curves. And what I mean by that is you'll see that you have splines that's just kind of going at some different curves. And what I do with these spline command, there's two types of ways you can do. You can do them with a spline fit, and that means that it's going to put these little blue dots in which these are going to be called nodes. And these nodes are going to go along everywhere where you click and make that curve at. So 
Here you have a little bit control over it. And then you also have a controlled vertices and that's what your CV is gonna stand for. And you can see that it's gonna create a line of tangency on here and then it's gonna kinda rotate it down here and then these two lines are gonna rotate that way. So depending on which type of spline that you're using, you can use both of those, but like I say, the one that I use the most, it's gonna be usually the spline fit. Okay, now you're gonna to have to create some layers. And when we create layers in AutoCAD, we're gonna use the, the, the it's a tool that you're gonna click on and it's gonna look like this. And it's gonna open this dialog box. What we're gonna typically use in this command, I mean, this uh, introduction class is gonna be, we're gonna go ahead and create a new layer you can look at these on and off, these locks and thaws and these line types, and then you can tell it if you want it plottable. You also got the line weight, the color. If you want to thaw it, and this arrow is kind of off a little bit, it should be pointing more toward that little sun shape there. And if you see a green check in front of it, and it's only going to be in front of one of them, that means that it is your current layer. Okay. So if you got to remember things, they're going to be turned on and off. If they're going to be locked, frozen, or thawed, and there's different rules that apply to these in the front. We'll be able to select and change our line type and we'll also be able to say hey if we want to print this out do I want that layer printed. Everything after this is create the new viewport and, and we'll get into that when we get into intermediate but one other thing you can do is you want to add a description you can add a description it's not it's not mandatory it's strictly optional it's something that if you have you know hundreds of layers that you can kind of Say, okay, I want to name this this, and I only want to put those objects on this. Okay, here's the rules that goes along with if things are on and off, frozen or thawed, or locked and unlocked. So if I have a layer that I turn it either on or off, basically you'll be able to see it on the screen, or you won't be able to see it on the screen. Okay, if I go freeze and thaw, if I put something on freeze and thaw, it works just like on and off. It's going to turn it on and off. But the other thing about it is, is that I cannot edit an object that is frozen. So if it is frozen, you won't be able to see it and you won't be able to change it. If it is off, I can change it, but I just don't see it. And the last option is going to be unlocked and locked. So if something is un if something is locked, that means basically you'll still be able to see it on the screen, but I can't change it at all. So hopefully you kind of see the difference between each one of those 